Could this be your new daily driver? Let's talk about the Firewire mashup by Rob Machado and Dan Mann. Hi guys, Chris from Stoke Patrol here, or welcome back to the channel. Now before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now today we're going to talk through the Firewire mashup, uh, which is a board I've been really stoked to test out. I actually stumbled on a bit of a leak of it, like way back in the middle of last year. I've been pretty stoked to see the launch of it and see whether it lived up to the hype. Uh, brought to you by two of my favourite shapers, Rob Machado and Dan Mann. It's a mixture of both the Dominator and the Spitfire with the Seaside all of which are incredible surfboards and ones that I personally enjoy surfing a lot myself. Uh, today we're going to jump into my full hands-on review. I've been testing it over the last few weeks in a variety of conditions. See whether it's the next daily driver you should be adding to your quiver. So yeah, let's jump straight in. So who is the Firewire mashup aimed at and what surf conditions does it really excel in? Well, the Firewire mashup sits in that small wave performance board category and is going to help you generate heaps of speed in smaller mushing conditions while still turning really well. Uh, even though it's quite a well-rounded board, much more than Firewire kind of like giving it credit for, the head high and under spot is definitely the sweet spot for this board. Um, but you can push it in kind of bigger conditions if it is a little bit of a fatter, mushier wave. Um, it's a well-rounded daily driver though, um, and I found it as my go-to board for the last few weeks. And I feel like 90% of surfers, this is going to be their go-to board for day-to-day -day conditions. Uh, with that in mind, I feel like the surfers it's going to really appeal to is uh, any kind of intermediates looking to push their small wave performance or really smash out those turns. Uh, anyone surfing in those smaller conditions, so anything kind of head high and under on a day-to-day -day basis, and anyone kind of surfing mushier, fatter breaks as well, even if it's got a little bit of size. Um, again, 90% of the surface, I feel like this is going to be your go-to board for day-to-day -day conditions. Now, if you've got somewhere like pipe or trestle sitting on your doorstep, the mushier, fatter conditions that most people surf on a daily basis, this is going to be a great go-to board. So let's talk through board breakdown and the dimensions of the Firewire mashup. Um, now this board is available in everything from a 5.2 at 24.9 litres right through to a 6.6 model which packs in 47 litres of, of volume. So you've got plenty of sizes to choose from. Uh, in terms of sizing you'll kind of want to put it between your Seaside and your Dominator 2. So for me I ride the 5.8 Seaside and the 6.0 Dominator 2 and I've gone for the 5.10 Firewire mashup. Uh, I could have got away with the 5.9 I think but I feel like in those smaller conditions a little bit of extra volume depth foam is definitely your friend in those smaller conditions and considering this is what it was kind of aimed at being ridden at I thought that little bit of extra volume would be great and it feels great in my feet and I'm actually really happy with the 510 model I've gone with. Uh, in terms of breakdown of the board tech specs you've got a really nice double concave running through to a V in the tail which splits off really nicely through those fins. Combine that with the swallowtail you've got a really good pivot point in the back really nice smooth rail to rail action here and it feels really lively under your feet and it's definitely a board that feels like it wants to be thrown around a lot more especially in comparison to the seaside which can be a bit sluggish on the turns a bit more drawn out. The firewire mashup is definitely more top to bottom style surfing and you can put in some really nice turns on this board. Um, in terms of volume wise and foam distribution uh, the wide point is just slightly forward of center uh, and even so even though it's a bit more pulled back than the seaside it's still got heaps of paddle power on this board and it's going to paddle really nicely even in those smaller mush conditions and that volume runs right through to tail and as you can see it's got a really nice kind of turn down rail in the back so that volume comes all the way through to the back end without uh, in interfering with any of the performance. So yeah that's the tech breakdown of the Firewire mashup. So now let's talk construction and fin setups. Uh, now the Firewire mashup is available in Helium 2 construction, uh, which is my favorite epoxy construction across the market. Super light, super durable, very robust, great for traveling. And that Helium construction also feels really lively in smaller conditions as well. So it suits the Firewire mashup absolutely perfectly. Uh, in terms of fin setups, it's available in both FCS and Futures fins construction, and it comes as a five fin option. And now before I got hold of my mashup, I chatted to Dan, who I connected with um, when I did my review of the Dominator 2, and he suggested just taking the uh, Firewire mashup with my quad fins out, and my, just my standard quads to start with. Um, they ran really great, um, that's the LZ5s in the front with the Futures fins in the back, which is my go-to kind of setup. 
ran absolutely great. Um, I have also tested it out with the Machado setup because obviously the back end of that's quite Seaside-esque. Um, was a little bit more difficult to turn, but I had a lot more drive. So it really depends what you really want to be doing with your surfing and the conditions you're surfing in as well. I feel in smaller, really mushier conditions, the Machado quads could be really good, but my go-to is just my standard quad fin setup. Uh, in terms of serving as a thruster, I have tested out. Uh, you do feel like the speed comes down a little bit, but the maneuverability does go up a bit as well, as you would find with most quad versus thruster constructions. For me though, the Firewire mashup definitely felt better as a quad, so that's what I'm going to be running from now on. Now, seeing as the mashup is a combination of two awesome boards on the market, the Seaside and the Dominator 2, um, which both of which you may already have in your quiver, I'm going to quickly run through the pros and cons compared to both and where it sits alongside them. First off is the Seaside by Rob Machado. Now, this is where the small wave capabilities of this board really come into play, and the Seaside is one of the best selling boards of all time. Uh, now, the Firewire mashup versus the Seaside, a couple of things you're going to notice. Uh, first off, it's definitely a much thicker thinner outline compared to the seaside and um, so you've got a little less volume under your chest but you're still going to have heaps of paddle power slightly less than the seaside i would say especially in those smaller conditions but not enough to really kind of make you kind of double think it for smaller conditions uh, what you will notice off the bat as well is the firewire mashup is a little bit slower than the seaside um, but in this case i don't think that's actually a bad thing at all as it's really going to kind of put you in the spot where you need to go or still be able to do a bit more top to bottom surfing and that's the main takeaway in terms of the Firewire mashup versus the Seaside is this board wants to be surfed a lot more aggressively. So if you're looking to kind of put in more top to bottom surfing, really get those cutbacks and nailed, then the mashup is definitely going to be a lot easier to throw around than the Seaside. Uh, the Seaside with that speed and just that more wider outline, a lot more kind of drawn out carves, a little less snappier, whereas the mashup really wants to go top to bottom and be thrown around. Next up is the comparison to the Dominator 2, which is one of my favorite boards in my quiver and where the performance side of the mashup really comes in. Uh, now for me, one of the biggest things you're gonna notice is the mashup performs better in the smaller end of the spectrum than the Dominator 2. So if you are surfing mainly in kind of those head high and under conditions, you're gonna find the mashup is really, really fun in them and a little bit more optimal than the Dominator 2. Uh, the flip side of this is the Dominator 2 does have the edge in bigger, punchier conditions. So if you're surfing overhead waves or hollower, punchier waves, kind of beach breaks and things, I think the Dominator 2 is going to be a better kind of go-to option. Um, that being said, though, the mashup actually feels livelier underfoot when it comes to turning. I feel like this, the, uh, the mashup wants to turn a lot easier. I just felt like it was a little bit more lively under my feet. Um, and that's where it's really going to kind of get quite difficult when deciding which of these boards to kind of go with. Uh, for me, I think because of the brakes I surf on a day-to-day -day basis and 90% of the time, the mashup is going to be my go-to daily dryer. And I think it has slightly replaced the Dominator 2 in that respect. That being said, though, the Dominator 2 is still going to be the board that I grab when it gets a bit bigger or if I'm sur uh, surfing kind of punchier brakes around the area as well. But yeah, the mashup overall, I feel, is a better, well-rounded daily driver, especially if you're surfing in that head high and under region. So what are my final thoughts on the Firewire mashup? Well, given the fact that its DNA stems from the Seaside, the Dominator 2, and the Spitfire, it's really not much of a surprise that the Firewire mashup feels so great underfoot, and it's such an awesome board to surf. Uh, for me, it has definitely got the stamp of approval as my new daily driver. It's going to be that board that I grab for most of my surfing trips. Um, and the fact that it handles really well in smaller, mushy conditions, but also that higher end of the spectrum in bigger, fatter waves and also a bit more punch as well, means it's just a great, versatile board. I feel like Firewire have marketed more as a performance groveler, which is potentially going to put a lot of people off. It's definitely a much more versatile, well-rounded board than they're kind of giving it credit for. So really don't write it off, especially if you're surfing in kind of anything from that chest to head high conditions. The Firewire mashup is going to be a great addition to your quiver. Um, and that's why I feel like 90% of surfers are going to really love this board. And it's going to be one of those go-to boards for a lot of people out there. But yeah, Firewire mashup, definitely one to consider. Get one under your feet, test it out. I'll see you in the lineup. And there you have it, guys. That's my full review of the Firewire mashup by Rob Machado and Dan Mann. Now, if you have any questions about the mashup, make sure you add them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure you check out the rest of my YouTube channel for more reviews, guides, and more. That's it for this week, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Tchau!